This table talk is made possible by Mighty with Migraine, a newsletter from the Mighty.com. I'm Kat. And I'm Sky. And we are joined by I'm Jess. I'm Alexandria. I'm Anjana. And today we're talking all about migraine in honor of Migraine and Headache Awareness Month. I don't know if you know this, but Sky and I are also the co-hosts of the first season of the Mighty's new podcast, Health and Unwellness, which is all about the debilitating neurological beast that is migraine. That's right. And we have an episode with three other Mighty staffers who live with the condition, and it just wasn't enough time to dig into everything we wanted to talk about. So today's Table Talk discussion is dedicated to tips, hacks, and tricks for living with migraine from people who actually live with it. And we're so excited for this one. So to kick things off, let's talk about what's our number one tips for living with migraine. Take sunglasses everywhere. Hot tip. Do you have any particular brand that you like more? Do you get a certain style? Are you all about function? Tell me more. The big ones that completely keep out all the light. Like the bigger the frame, the better. I completely agree. Cosign that. Absolutely. They have to be ginormous. <laughs> Plus one. Jess, yeah, you want yeah, yep. Same. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> we need to um, take a picture like on Zoom with all of us wearing our gigantic sunglasses. I would like it. That's a great tip. If I was to give a tip, my big one, and this is not so much like a, a product or a hack, but it's really be selfish. I think if someone would have told me that 20 years ago, I would have been like, that's a terrible word. Why are you telling me to be selfish? And I think I've realized that and something I say to myself a lot is, would someone else push through the pain to participate and to show up? And I think a lot of the times the answer is no. And when the answer is no, I give myself permission to just make that decision because they aren't paying for doing it. They don't have to restructure their life to do it. People are going to be happier if I'm selfish because that means hopefully I can show up at a later date. So that would be my number one tip. Jess, what about you? Yeah, I'd say kind of along the same lines, like don't be a jerk to yourself. That goes to like being selfish. It also goes to like paying attention to what's happening before and immediately after your migraine attack. And like that's something that it took me years to realize that all of that other stuff that was happening was part of it. And so the more I've been able to learn about that and, and pay attention to that and realize what's happening, the easier it is to not be a jerk to myself. Migraine and mental health is one of Sky and I's absolute favorite topics. And I think that the whole being a jerk to yourself fits really into that because If a physical condition already makes you feel bad mentally, if struggling makes it, you know, you struggle in other places, take kind of your yourself out of it. Give yourself a little bit of a rest and a break. And hopefully that could eat for me, at least it really eases up on like the guilt and the shame, which can really interrupt like your ability to accept your condition to your ability to heal whatever healing looks like for you. Anjana, what you got? For me, I think my tip would be if migraine is something that you're living with every day, it it would be to curate an everyday carry migraine kit. And my life changed a lot after I did that because I would go out and then I would have a migraine and I won't have medicines or I won't have, I use eucalyptus oil or like axe oil that really calms my nerves or I won't have like medicine to have immediately or like even a mask, an eye mask or something like that. So what I've, I think, changed my life for good is to have an everyday carry migraine, an EDC migraine kit that has everything I need when I know I'm going to get a migraine or after I have a migraine when I'm out and about. And even inside the house, it just makes me feel really calm. So that's my tip incredible tip. I think especially like one, it's the unpredictability of migraine. And then two, it's the when you're in a lot of pain or you're experiencing other symptoms, the last thing you want to do is run around the house, go to the pharmacy to pick something up. Yeah. Sky, isn't that a great idea? I was about to say, Anjana, our queen of kits. Oh my goodness. I love that idea, especially how that preparation does, it calms your nerves a bit. And you mentioned how taking care of kind of the anxiety also helps because that would be my number one tip is to acknowledge the importance of taking care of your mental health while taking care of your physical health because the two are intertwined as much as I've tried personally to separate them out and try to ignore physical health while working on my mental health. You can't. They're so linked. So I found that in addition to all the other things I do to take care of 
my migraine symptoms, continuing to go to my weekly therapy sessions also helps a lot because then I can address, you know, stress is a huge trigger for me. So I can address that. I can just feel more prepared emotionally for when attacks happen. And that's that's made a big change for my migraine experience. Yeah, I think also just giving yourself permission to make that kit is also like huge because for the longest time, I, for some reason, thought that I didn't deserve it, (laughs) which is a weird thing to think. But just giving yourself permission, I think, is also like taking care of yourself and goes along the lines of not being a jerk to yourself and being selfish and understanding that you need that care, you know, doing that for yourself. I think one thing, and this kind of relates to for a very long time, I'm talking like 10 years, people, I put off, put off like using a pill organizer because I just kept saying to myself, I got this, like I can measure out how many pills I need to take. I'll always remember. And I think the big underlining concept of that was that like it was me acknowledging that I needed one. Like it felt weird to be like other people don't need a pill organizer. Why do I need one? So I think the permission to make your kit makes a lot of sense. Can I ask a question? Yes, always. How do you use a pill organizer without all of your pills smelling and tasting like each other? I don't I don't have any that like have a taste. <laughs> I, do we do we have a hack for that? I've never <laughs> noticed that being okay. an issue. I'm so sorry. I take them all in one gulp. I had a pill that would like did not have a coating and it would like kind of rub off. I actually started taking like a little corner of a tissue and like kind of wrapping that one pill in it so that it wouldn't like rub off on the other pills. That kind of helped. Interesting. There's no real clean way of doing it. Okay. Thank you. Great question though. I have another thing to add. Yes, Alexandria. We keep talking about like being selfish and giving ourselves permission to be selfish. A few years ago in a therapy session, I'd said to my therapist, I'm going to be selfish. And she was like, it's not really being selfish. It's just taking care of yourself. Oh, I just wanted to pass that along because it felt like being selfish to me. But from an outsider perspective, it's just taking care of yourself. What does that say about our society, everyone? (laughs) Yes. Love that. Great therapy gems. It's so true, though. And I feel like people with chronic illnesses, especially when they're always present, it's just this concept of like we almost overcompensate. There are other people who don't go to things or don't participate simply because they don't want to. And that's not usually viewed as selfish. But for some reason, at least in my experience, it's like, well, if I don't try and go, I look like I don't want to be there or I don't care enough and it then translates into feeling selfish but hot tip really really love it let us transition i would love to talk about what do you do after an attack has gone so you've gone through all four stages you've recovered from your migraine hangover what do you do in your post flare self-care as i like to say Well, I am currently sitting here after my meds have just kicked in not too long ago, uh, an earlier meeting. Kat and Jess saw me wearing my headache hat. But my biggest suggestion is actually do as I say, not as I do. Don't be like me and try to push yourself after a flare. Just because you can sit upright and get work done while wearing sunglasses doesn't mean you should. And if you can take extra time to recover, please do so. Things take the time they take. That is mostly saying it like as a reminder for myself too, as I sit here sitting upright working. And I get that like, yeah, there's a lot of times where we have obligations and we have to push ourselves. But like, if it's bad, bad, take care of it before it gets worse. And like, it's easier to take care of yourself when you're like recovering from the flare than it is if you trigger a whole new attack. That's that's my word of wisdom. The domino, the domino effect. I feel like you're talking directly to me with that advice. Alexandria feels called out. I feel like I added everybody, including myself, and I'm sorry, but take care of yourselves. Like, just at me next time. <laughs> Alexandria, now that you have the mic, what, what would you say? I mean, I actually like getting back into like my passion project work like there's things I like to do just like on the computer that take concentration and sometimes they're passion projects sometimes they're work related but I actually really do like getting back into those because I can the type of projects where I can lose myself in the process that can be kind of difficult if I'm still sensitive to light in the aftermath and then I really do need to back off and take care of myself, as Guy suggests. But I, I do like kind of losing myself in the work or reading. Yes. Uh, but again, the eye strain, depending on where I am, sometimes I have to stop that 
And that is frustrating. But I, I like doing things where I can kind of lose myself in the process, where it doesn't require too much higher level thought, I guess, where I can kind of get into like a zone. That works for me. I would never push anyone else to do the same. Like that, that's, a, that's a personal choice. Okay. So you know when you're right there at the end and you've got the like hangover, you're a little nauseous still and just that little bit of pain still hanging out, but like you're almost there. Okay. Electrolytes. Hot shower, McDonald's Coke and fries with extra salt <laughs> and more electrolytes, <laughs> and then go to bed. <laughs> okay. Okay. Talking my language. Fries. So true. Anything to help with the nausea. Absolutely. Yeah. Anjana, did this blow your mind? Have you ever done it? Have you ever tried it? Nope. I have not tried that, <laughs> but I am going to try it next time. <laughs> I'm very intrigued by the fries. Hmm. I think it might help. Yep, yep. You're like, oh, it's it's part of my, like, my doctor prescribed it. Like, I have to go and get French fries now. Yes. Potatoes are magic. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's going on my t-shirt. <laughs> I think what I do usually, like, after a hangover is, um, like, a migraine hangover. <laughs> what I do after I, like, kind of can't think straight is try to think of the things I did the day before because I'm still kind of trying to identify what led me to the migraine. So I write it down. So I have like a migraine book. Just kind of write it down. You know, did I have lunch late or did I strain myself too much? Did I overwork? Did I not sleep well the night before? So I think that helps a lot. And that kind of helps me not have more migraines, migraine <laughs> along the line. So yeah, I think that's one thing that I do. And I think that helps my dad so that's something that I've been telling him to do he says that that helps him so I just wanted to share that I like how varied everyone's answers are right which speaks into the whole what works for one person doesn't work for the other my big thing kind of falls in line with you Alexandria which is I, lo I love to go outside not that I don't go outside for the days when I have an attack because it is logistically hard to coop yourself up for days, especially if you have a pet or you have to go to an appointment or go to the ER, right? You're going to go outside, but I don't recommend like staring into the sun. No one should ever do that. But I do like to like look up at the sun and notice how it's not like absolutely, you know, sh you know, blinding me and making my attack worse. I like to actually touch the grass, guy. I know. Can't believe it. But... Touching the grass is good. Ugh. Yeah, I know. It's annoying when the things that people have told you work, like, you know, journaling, going outside. It's annoying when they help, but uh, yeah, I feel that. It's more annoying when other people suggest them. <laughs> True. But when I'm suggesting it from one migraine patient to another, it's okay. Touch some grass, go outside, <laughs> do your thing. But thank you all so much. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being here, everyone. And thank you out there for listening. And hey, friends out there, if you want more conversations like this, subscribe to Mighty With Migraine by going to bit.ly slash migraine inbox. That is B-I-T dot L-Y slash M-I-G-R-A-I-N-E-I-N-B-O-X. We'll see you in your inbox. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.